well. I went online and I found a lot of like almost like generic stump jumpers on Amazon and eBay that all said that oh they fit this and they fit that. But when I took the actual dimensions of this one and the way that this one mounts to the shaft on the bush hog gearbox, I couldn't find anything that matched up. Then I found that apparently bush hog still makes a model with like the same model number I think and it may very well be the same exact one uh, as far as the replacement stump jumper goes the problem is that's to get that as a genuine bush hog replacement part it's like 350 bucks and then I think that doesn't even include shipping so that's a problem for me I don't want to put 350 or more dollars into this old stump jumper, um, this old bush hog. Um, I mean, if I wanted to repair a bush hog, there was one on Marketplace just the other day. It was a six footer, an even bigger bush hog or brush hog. And uh, the guy wanted 350 bucks for it. And it needed some work, but you know, <laughs> might not have even needed as much work as this does. So I'm gonna try and salvage this stump jumper. So I've got my, my number six rosebud heating attachment on my oxyacetylene setup. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and heat this metal up so it becomes a little bit more pliable and see if I can't get this closer to the correct shape. And then if I can do that, maybe I can weld in a patch plate that the thick part that actually has the tapered hole in it that mounts to the uh, shaft on the gearbox could actually mount to. We'll, we'll see. It's, this is all theoretical at this point. I'd take this seal out so I can order a new one because it might take a while for that to come in.
Oh, that's a mess in there. All right. So I got to get these cutting blades and uh, the special retaining bolts and the nuts and everything off of this centerpiece so I can see how badly bent that is and also start to figure out how I'm gonna how I'm gonna get that to fit back into that pan well wouldn't you know it these are 1 and 11 16 inch nuts which my cheapo Pittsburgh tool Chinese giant socket set skips over that size one and five eighths and then it goes to one three quarter fortunately for me this one is actually so loose I could take it off with my fingers I guess that's not a good sign this one's a little tighter as luck would have it I do have one one and eleven sixteenths inch wrench it's this big old Williams super wrench I sure am glad I didn't sell this up here on my patented outdoor surface plate patented design it's all weather the, the thing is this has a crown to it clearly there's a big gap here so I mean it could be that it's bent or that could be by design the reason I wonder if whether or not it's by design is because it's so uh, symmetrical so just for giggles, let's get the pan up here and see how it fits over that mess. stick to that thing and it's filthy oh, no need to preload my poor parts washers already overtaxed fluid with uh, this heavy crud that I can just scrape off and throw away clean the surface plate when done. So I cleaned this thing up in the parts washer and uh, I can see that it actually has a pretty noticeable crown to it. So it's got a bend in it and as luck would have it, the bend, the high point when I put this on a flat plate, 
the high point is right here in the middle, which I'm actually not too surprised because this is pretty thick steel. And if you think about it, the weakest point on this is going to be right here where this big hole is bored through the center of it. So this is the weak point. And that being said, my plan is if I support it between these big parallels in the press here, I figure I'll put this on here like this and I'll press down in the middle and hopefully I can get this to straighten out. Now, before I do that, a couple of things. First off, my pusher piece here that I just went to put on here, I notice it's not sitting well. And the reason why is because there's a raised area of metal right here from where it looks like the metal was deformed by the keyway, uh, damaged the keyway at some point. Which, you know, in a perfect world, to do this right, I really should, I should build this up with, well, the perfect world, I shouldn't even be messing with this, I should just be buying a new one, right? But I mean, a perfect repair would be to uh, actually build up this uh, metal in here with a TIG weld maybe, and then broach a new keyway. But I really don't want to do that. It's just going to be difficult. I'd rather, if I have to, fashion some sort of custom key to go in there. But this little bit of metal that's built up right here, I can take care of that. That's just a matter of, of, of a quick touch up with the grinder. I could flatten this out so that this will sit flat. Right now there's a good size space underneath there. You can't see it, but trust me, it's there. So I'm going to do that. And then the other thing I think I'll do is I'll probably heat this up right here in the middle. This area should heat up quickly with map gas, hopefully. And I'm not going to get it red hot. I doubt it. Take probably oxyacetylene, which I don't have oxyacetylene down here. It's catch-22. I bring the oxyacetylene set up down here. Difficult as hell. And I don't like having it in the house. Or bring the shop press outside. And again, another pain in the butt. So instead, we'll just use a bottle of map gas. So I, I should just shut up and get grinding. All right. So I got my setup all set. Uh, I'm going to take this out just for the moment while I heat this. I've got this already cranked down pretty close so that I don't have to have it cooling off as I try and pump this thing a million times to get it down there, right? You know, whatever. The hell am I talking about? So I've got a ground piece of uh, steel that uh, makes a really good straight edge. And my plan is I'm gonna use this, just hold it on the bottom here and uh, as that straightens out, hopefully that space will go away. So keep that handy. Let's heat it up. So what do we use to light the torch? Striker. Pretty much zero color change out of this thing. There's too much thermal mass there. Well, hopefully this will keep it from cracking. And it might be a little bit of spring back there, so that's why I actually went a little bit past, very little past. I'm gonna. Take the pressure off and see. Ooh, it's a lot better. I'm gonna push it just a little bit more. But I think that heat is helping, so I am gonna light it up again. And what do we use to light it? Striker! Well, that was interesting. What the hell happened there? 
All right, well, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go change my pants. I think maybe that tank is low and the uh, pressure dropped low enough that it, uh, I don't know. All I know is a whole lot of, whole lot of fire coming out of places I didn't want it to. Scared me, I tell you. Now that may not have changed color, but I know it's still plenty hot, so I'm not reaching in there and grabbing that with these gloves. Now we're cooking. Alright, so I just tried uh, fitting this in here from both sides, and it's not lining up the way I want it to, and that's because I, in the process of trying to pound this and flatten it out, I'm sure I deformed some of this. I mean, this is actually still push down right here and shouldn't be. So, I think what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to uh, grind it, tweak it in a couple of spots. So like right here it's touching. There's a little area that's touching where it looks like the rest of this would line up almost perfectly if it wasn't for that hanging up. So I'm just gonna grind that off. And I'm just gonna keep working at it a little by little. See if I can get get it pretty good. The less large voids I have, the less trouble I'm hopefully going to have during uh, during the welding process. Oh, this is going to be a long process, and uh, you guys probably have better things to do than watch me do a bunch of grinding. So, we'll pick this up when I'm done.